So guys, as you might not know, this is our last episode. Um, we loved having you join us for our little talks with our guests, Sam, Saul. Um, it's been an entire year. Um, like Sam's mentioned before, it's been a roller coaster. Um, anything to add to that real quick before we move on? Uh, well, and first of all, I just want to say this episode gets a little bit deeper than some of the other episodes. Um, we get into mental health and a bit of a deep note. So for people out there that may be in the car with your parents and maybe you don't want to get into a deep uh, podcast or for some people that are dealing with their own issues and may not feel comfortable, maybe this is not an episode that you are going to feel comfortable listening to. Um, so there is a warning that comes a touch attached to this episode. Um, I also want to mention, unless Saul's got something else you want to mention in regards to that. No, yeah. I mean, the conversation did start off a little bit slow, but ended way deeper than probably any other episode we've had. So, Yeah, very. it did end very deep, that's for sure. Mm. I just wanted to mention, we talked about episode 52. We were going to read out some reviews, um, five-star reviews that we got. This was sent to me in a DM. Um, it was a very long review, and I'm not going to read it out in its entirety. But it came from a listener. Um, I don't even know how you'd pronounce this name. Um, Snigda, Snigda Raju from Hyperabad in India said uh, it's her absolute favorite podcast. But listen to all the dive pods as well. But this one really, really suits my taste. And I really think it's highly underrated and a gem of a podcast. Sometimes I post Instagram stories to make it known to... Um, uh, eh, to make it known to people I know. Other times I want it to be a treasure. Not too many people know of and the clout will lead to nitpick, nitpicking or something of that sort. I really appreciate Sam, Dol, uh, Sam, Dave and Saul for all their good work you do. Dave is the relatable millennial that represents the, the like more introverted demog demography. Saul is the life of the party. Uh, his energy is really funny and light. I'm really glad he became a regular on the show and Sam is always the anchor that brings back the conversation to its flow and asks the important questions and gives his witty and knowledgeable insights. It's just beautiful to hear your conversation flow the way it does. I really feel comforted in the dynamic you guys have. I'm al I've almost never known a guest on your show and I really love that. I can just listen to their new stories uh, with a clean slate of mind. It's really, really fascinating. It gives the listener this delusional feeling that you're our friends. You always do such a good job as hosts and the guests always feel so comfortable and get them talking about really nice and deeply light and lightly deep topics. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then went on to say, and when you have male uh, guests, like I said, as a girl, I really feel like I'm voyeuristically eavesdropping on a couple of cool guys just having a wonderful conversation and a jolly good time. Uh, I love that you guys go just into the right amount of deepness without going into politics and religion topics that are too heavy. Um, well, always just giving us food for thought. So, nice. yeah. yeah. I thought that was a really cool Thank uh, you so review. much. That's, thank you so much for that review. Also, I came from India, of uh, a place I didn't expect we'd have a great deal of listeners from. But, uh, yeah. It's such I mean, a damn shame. Absolutely. No, you know what? Like, even on my Discord, I, I told people, I, I said on my Twitch, it's we're coming up on the end of our podcast. And there were dozens of people who are like, that's so unfortunate. That's so unfortunate. I listen to this podcast religiously. It's so different from the other podcasts. It's if people even knew how different it was or the conversations we talk about. And it's such a damn shame, in my mm. opinion, how that, you know, first of all, I feel bad for Diane. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad for a lot of the people that believe in this podcast because if you just take the second to listen, there's a lot of stuff you can learn. A lot of stuff 
that comes from experience. A lot of good, and we're good people. You're not listening to people who treat other people poorly. We're, we're decent people that, you know, have lived in Korea for a long time and we've had very different experiences. You know, our podcast is a little bit different in terms mm-hmm. of what we talk about and in terms of our background. Yeah, I, I, I guess it wasn't like right when this started, but my, my like career as a musician here was like at an all-time high, you know, being on TV and stuff. And the TV show that I was on, it finished like the end of November. And it was like, you know, like we were getting more money for shows. And, you know, I was able to like be a full-time musician. And then Corona started like a month later. And I was really disheartened by it because I kind of was like, yeah, this is what I've been w- w- working for my whole life. Like strangers taking pictures with me, mm-hmm. like real fans finally here. And I was rapping in Korean and I was really expect- just my career looked like it was about to take off in a way that I had wanted it to for a long time. And, you know, because of Corona, all that came to an end. Black Moss left Korea. And Dave just like immediately was like, hey, don't worry, I got you. Let's make YouTube videos together. Me and Sam are about to start a podcast. You can be on it. And it just brought me so much life. I was, I just was really grateful to have something to look forward to when I was thinking that I didn't know what was coming next. Dave really helped me out as he tries to help out a lot of people. So I, for me, it was an awesome experience. I just love talking and, you know what I mean? I remember, I remember you. I would do yeah, this for free. So it was like, yeah, this is like the highlight of my week coming in here. Yeah. Like that was, that was a while back. And then, and then it's kind of like, and then we've come to this stage and it's like, I, for, I guess for me, I feel, I feel the worst for, for Saul. Like it's like, I know how much you enjoyed coming in here every week. And it was just like, you know, I know every time Saul came in, he was just so hyped to be in here. And especially being that you're a performer and because of everything that's happening with COVID. um, Yeah. I think under the circumstances, it's unfortunate. Would I change anything? Would I go back and, and no, I'd do it again. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, I had a blast. I'd Dave's just again. more of like a realist about like, the, uh, like I mean, yeah. about these kind of things. And that's change, why the show is cool. Change things. Yeah, sure. Change small things. But I wouldn't go back and say, no, nah, I'm not doing that again. I'd, be, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I'd yeah. do it again. I wouldn't do it again in the COVID situation. I, I think we could have waited it out. COVID ended and then really do it the right way. But, but when, how are we supposed to know? Yeah, but, the f- but, this, yeah, but that's yeah. the thing. Like even now, when 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 do we know when COVID's going to end? It's, you know exactly. It's it's um. There's too many factors to it's what ifs. Don't worry, and it's no no reason. To, when COVID when COVID ends, season two. And I probably should mention I like turtles. <laughs> 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 And it's everyone is find the time to say that. <laughs> you know that uh, video, right? Uh, you know what's funny? Like, um, I was mentioning Diane, but like it's like a bunch of like, for example, Andreas and like Wolf and stuff have gone on to you know, you know, talk to Diane outside of the podcast. And I mean, Andreas, he told me he went to you for advice on stuff like that. You know, Wolf literally started something new here and like not enough there's not enough appreciation for her so if you guys don't know Diane is back there like moving the conversations help us like helping us I don't know it's just I have a lot of respect for you and I told you outside of this I'm gonna be hitting you up a lot more for ideas and stuff like that so I think there should be some appreciation for Diane because she was the first person I went to about this believe it or not I had a podcast with Jay and I was like hey you know I kind of like this pod. I did one with Jamie. It did, it did pretty well. I had one with Jay. People liked it. So I was like, hey, you know, this could work. Sam Hamilton's a boy of mine. And he wants to do something like this, you know. And Diane listened and she set it up. And so, I mean, there should be nothing but appreciation out there for you. Thank you, Diane, for doing this. At least we came out of this saying we did do a podcast. That's cool. Who can say that? Yeah. And, and we 52 episodes. 52 episodes. We got like a full a full year. Like a lot of people come, I'm doing a podcast in like 
six episodes later, they're like, fuck it. I'm not doing that yeah. shit anymore. Yeah. I, and I learned how, how this works too. Mm -hmm. I learned how it's not as easy as it… You know, some people watch podcast, successful podcasts and they're just talking. How easy is that? It's not as easy yeah. as it looks. Catch me on Twitch. I have conversations with people similar to this. Um, I want to get these two. If you guys are down, sometimes we'll do some live talks. Yeah, for sure. People enjoy it. Um, of course, my YouTube is always is always there. So YouTube's going to continue to grow. Yeah, I'll be with Sam and Dave doing some stuff. Got an album coming out hopefully soon. Support his album. Yeah. It's going to be called Blue. An album by Sam, Ryan. you can find him on billboards. And, uh, <laughs> and you guys don't realize how big Sam is in Korea. Y'all are fools. You can you can find me on Instagram. Um, yeah. If you want to find me, find me there. If you want to catch me, catch me outside. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me outside. We're here with, How about that? We're here with Jonathan the zombie. Jonathan, you, what do you have to say for yourself? I like turtles. <laughs> this is nonsensical. Shave your head. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to like touch my hair and stuff, you know. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Feels good. I think I'm going to be like this. For at least five years. <laughs> it's it's hot boy summer. You know, we gotta shave off these, get our hairs <laughs> shaved. I gotta have it like this in the winter, but I yeah, I I actually like the shaved head. I I wish I could go the shaved head look. Why can't you? Well, you got a funny shaped head? No, I've I've got actually a, quite a decent shaped head. It's just, you know, <laughs> there are people out there that want me to have hair on my head. Oh, okay. You know, people people that pay my bills. Unfortunately. When's the last time you guys hung out, Wu and Dave? Uh, not the last time. Last podcast. I've been busy as hell too. Oh, yeah? I think both of us have been that busy. Yeah. And you said, you said you're not really dancing much these days, right? No, I dance a lot these days. <laughs> you are dancing a lot. Why did you say… No, he said he, he quit that… He, the, the, as, a, as a career. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I, th <laughs> I thought you were… That's why I was confused when, when Diane said… That you had quit dancing. No, you, huh? <laughs> what? What did you quit? No, like, <laughs> like he used uh, to back be, in the days. He used to be like a professional, like dancer. Like that used to be everything. His job, the only, his yeah. job, the only thing he did. And now he's dancing. He's not the enjoyment in that of it. field anymore. Uh -huh. As in, like he's not running that his entire life through that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Now Wu does as a profession. You're now DJing. You're now. Choreography? Are you still doing choreography, or is it more just stage direction? Uh, my job right now. Yeah. Uh, I DJ. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I do that. Mm -hmm. The the stage directing and stuff like that. And I have to make a a film mm -hmm. pretty soon. I already made like two, and I wrote a script for one, and I got to make another one mm -hmm. pretty soon. And yeah, I, I I do stuff here and there, man. <laughs> yeah. So last time I remember <laughs> last time we were talking about movies, directing movies. That's kind of the direction you we were talking about getting into. But dancing professionally, that is something you've you've quit completely. Uh, I quit a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a long ass story. If I get to hold on, we've got time. Back. I started dancing when I was like 24, 25. And then I stopped around when I was like 35. You know? And oh, so later in my life, so so many stuff, so much stuff happened. And the main thing was because I was in a it's not that I stopped dancing, I just got out of the industry. The the industry, I don't know if I should say industry, but the field that I was in, you know, which mm -hmm. was the street dance in Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the street dance genre was like popping, locking, hip hop, house, crump, and b boying You know, that's like the, the main dance. And, and, I, and I've done a lot for the scene, you know. It's before YouTube. Yeah. And I don't think anybody has done more opened up competition than I did in Korea with the street dance. You know, I, I've opened up so many competitions just with my money, you know, and I was doing it 
almost like every other month. Ah, you would like hold your own competitions and have Mm, people come compete? Yeah. So if it's like a rap battle, I'll have a rap battle competition every once once a month or once in two months. Mm -hmm. Cool. You know? And so I was doing that for years after I made some name on myself for other kids to do it, you know? And, but after, you know, a lot of years, I, so I was judging a lot too. And I was doing solo performance. And I noticed like things weren't changing. You know, things were like, I've noticed like other fields, everything was progressing with the money and just everything. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this scene wasn't changing at all. So Mm -hmm. I think they just got comfortable doing the same stuff over and over again without trying to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, And there were like final three moments that happened the final three stage stages that that I got in, uh, that I performed, it just made me blow up. the The final one, I think, it just added up from one to three. You know. Yeah. And so the last performance that I did while I was performing with other dancers, about like thirty six seconds later, the music starts going crazy. The sound system, something blew up. It was just the music was coming out, and this noise at the same time was coming out. It was just like. You know? <laughs> and I'm so I'm performing, right? Oh, you were in the middle of like a dance yeah. when that happened? Yeah. Oh shit. So I'm like, so DJ's not stopping the music. So I'm I am i so I'm so I'm just going. So I, I'm not sure like if I should stop or not, you know? And I just kept going out of subconscious, I think, you know. And I was like breathing hard at the same time too, you know? Yeah. But I keep and the music started going lower and lower. And the, the other sounds started getting louder and louder. And at that time, the other dancers had to come in and perform together. So I was performing alone. And the other dancers come in and we're all performing together, you know. So I think that was like the longest five minute of performance that I did in my life, you yeah. know. <laughs> but we finished it, you know. But it just, I think I was young too. That's mm-hmm. what. But I just had a lot of stuff inside boiled up. And it just kind of blew up that. What day, were you like, thinking as that was, as that was happening? Like as all that noise. I don't and, know, man. Were you just <laughs> I, angry? I don't know. Like don't if know. I trace back, it was just man. I don't know. <laughs> was it, it like was just, panic, anxiety, <clears throat> sort of feeling? I don't know. I was on stage. You know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I have a question. This is like we've talked about this between you and I, but you say that there's in that field while you were doing. There's a lot of drama too, right? Yeah. yeah. And that that kind of stuff also kind of pushed you away as well. Some of the drama. Yeah, I think everything just boiled, boiled up together, yeah. you know. And I think there's drama in every mm-hmm. subculture in general. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, and, uh, but while not evolving and cr- cr- creating drama, that must cause even more stress, right? Like you say, the field wasn't evolving as well. And people uh-huh. were not, you know, trying to progress the field of work. So that must stress you out as well. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess it all depends on a person, but when you do a solo performance or a judge performance or a group performance, you know, some people, they just freestyle mm-hmm. and, you know, they they don't get prepared for anything and they just do it. I, if it's good for them, it's good, you know, but I'll I'll choose a song and I'll, I'll dance over and over again for hours and hours until that day, you know, so I'll, I mean, just a lot of hours, you know. Mm. And and I was doing that for years. Like, my body was getting weary, you know. And I was just, I'm, my personality is I'll, I'll try to make it uh, almost perfect in my in my eyes. Where I feel, like, I, I feel free on stage, you know. And, yeah, everything just, it, it just added up, you know. And. I mean, this is kind of with the subject and off the subject, but yeah, with the drama too. We, you know, I think we do those things like, you know, the stuff you're doing with music or or the stuff that I, I've done with dancing. We're just, we, we got out of the, the box, right? Because we wanted to be free from this this box, yeah. mm-hmm. from the society, right? And then I, I, we get out. 
and there's another we go into another box <laughs> and i want to try other stuff or events from that box right and and at that time they were holding me more you know what i mean hold you down yeah because they they don't want me to get out of this box you know so i'm trapped in another box i noticed that from a lot of subculture too from other yeah, things yeah. you know whether it be you know whatever tattoo or yeah. whatever subculture you know especially like, in korea right like don't korean a lot of korean people like to separate their musicians and their actors and their like the fans like want you to be a certain thing and stay that way right i think it's like that everywhere i think it's i mean i I've never been to the States after I've been deported, but, you know, <laughs> it seems like it's like that everywhere, you know? I have a question then. You know, since I'm in a more, since I'm in a newer field than dance, you know, you know, the content creators, a newer field. So I guess we started with a little bit more freedom, but something like dance, like back in the day, I know you like to try new things. Even with the four or five years I've known you, you've, you've gone, you ended up being a DJ, you've done… You do movies now. You've done a little bit of everything. When you were doing dance back in the day, were there people in that field that when you were tr when you were thinking about doing other things, were there other people in that field that had creative ideas that wanted to branch out and try new things, but they were criticized or people like, what the fuck is that guy doing? What's wrong with that guy? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? Why is he breaking our our pattern that we we know? Are there people that were like insulted or criticized? Yeah, there are a lot of people, a lot of people like that. I mean, a lot of dancers like that, even hey. in like b-boy scene and uh, just it. But locking locking scene is pretty cool. You know? <laughs> They're like pretty much happy. You yeah, know? They, they always look happy. Yeah. Have you ever seen lockers? Yeah. Like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they always look like they always look like always smiling yeah. too. Like locking that scene is fun. That shit looks fun as hell. Yeah, locking scene is pretty cool, and I'm still uh, friends with a lot of locking dancers. You know? Yeah, yeah, and. You heard it here I think, first, folks. Lockers I think locking cool. dancers are the only, <laughs> the only dancers. Ones left. <laughs> locking dancers are cool with each other. And bebop dancers, they're cool with each other because there are some the small amount, you know. Yeah, bebop, it's a smaller. Yeah. Mm. yeah. One second. Okay. Go on. Yeah. It's a it's such a small community, though. Obviously, with bebop. Mm -hmm. So they obviously not as much drama. No drama. <laughs> Probably no drama. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> Like, um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't met all of them, but you it's probably, probably like 20 of them. of them, you know. Man, yeah. your robot 20, was 30. looking hella rusty <laughs> last week. <laughs> mm. You probably have met all of them if you think about it. Yeah, but probably almost <laughs> all of them. There's only like 20, 30, I think. Yeah. But like these days, I noticed like some dancers are getting into it, you know. Like my teacher, he's, he's been teaching, uh, I think he taught twice recently. But he hasn't taught for a while either, you know. But I think people are interested, like some dancers. So I practice with uh, some lockers who are interested in the UK jazz. It's also called UK jazz. Yeah. What I think, it, what I think about it is too is now that people are stuck inside because of COVID. There's a lot of there's a lot more um, people a lot more people watching YouTube as well as they have these in Korea. It's kind of like right now a fad to do these. One-time classes. Your girlfriend likes to do those. Baking, she? Uh, cooking. She does a ton of those, yeah. Yeah, and I see, I've seen stuff for dance as well. A lot of these, like a little one-time classes. Yeah. Especially more niche markets. Yeah. My, my girl does like a drum lesson one week. And the next really? week will learn like pole dancing. and then it, Yeah. She does like a different kind of just class. One, just one, cl like, yeah. one class. But with it. drumming, she like, she really, really liked it, so… We did like a, not wakeboarding, paddleboard. We did like a one day paddleboard class. Mm -hmm. Like went out on the Han River together. That's cool. So, yeah, it's cool. I have a question, Wu. You like to, so like I mentioned earlier, briefly, when I, maybe it was like two, two years ago, Wu was like, yo, I'm going to learn how to DJ. <laughs> I'm like, all right, dude, and you do that. <laughs> a year later, he's <laughs> DJing and he's, <laughs> According to a lot of people, like very talented, at <laughs> and if he wants to do something, he does something. Well, what's something I know you, you you're in a film now. You know, you've taken up tap dancing, jazz dancing, you've done all this stuff. So, if 
you go into a time chamber and you get a year to learn something else outside of dancing, mm. and DJing. What is the thing? So they're like, you have a year, a ch- chamber, you'll have all the necessary materials you need. What's some Oof. random thing that you could learn? I like, actually started already. <laughs> what is it? Uh, saxophone. Oh, I thought, sick. Ooh, actually, I was blowing it on, right. in my car too, you know. That's right. <laughs> wow. While I was coming here. It's so hard, right? Even You're to make it make a sound. You're playing the saxophone in Gekko, your car while you Gekko were coming here. gifted you the saxophone, right? Yeah, Kekko yeah. and an uh, artist named Kimoki. Yeah. Yeah, they both bought me a, for a birthday gift. Wow, cool. Yeah, they were like, what, what do you want? So I, I want a saxophone, you know. Because recently… <laughs> recently… <laughs> <laughs> very specific yeah. gift. Yeah. Yeah, because recently I, I went to watch uh, Kimoki, his… His performance, you know, I mean, his little uh, concert that he did. Because, you know, there there can't be a lot of people, but there was, mm-hmm. I think it's, he's allowed to do it in a certain space of 50 or 60 people or something mm-hmm. like that. So I, I went there and it was my first time watching him live. And I think it was one of the best uh, concerts that I, I went to. I've went, even though it was a small one. Yeah, it was, and after I watched him, I, yeah, I'm gonna learn this shit. You know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, I might not do it professionally, but I just want to feel what he's feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and then you take it out, and you can barely even make a sound with it, right? Yeah, at first you can't. It's so you can't, crazy. You can't make any sound, you know. Yeah, my uh, brother got a saxophone for on Christmas morning uh-huh. the last time I was in America, like four years ago, and pulled that shit out and. You think that you're just going to be able to <laughs> blow in it and make sounds and then you press the button, but you have to like really mm. hold like your the... lips in the right way. So yeah. what I'm doing right now is he told me just to blow on the the front part, you know, not the bottom. Ah, that's what she okay. said. Yeah, that's, that's all <laughs> that's I've That's what doing. she said. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so, uh, so that's what you're blowing in the car. Yeah. So you're car. okay. Okay. When you said you're… Blowing in the, you're playing it in the car. I'm envisioning you playing the full saxophone no, no, no. while <laughs> trying to drive. I'm like, no, no. that's an accident waiting to happen right there. <laughs> Only Wu. I'm going to play saxophone yeah, at yeah, the yeah. same time. I, shit, I might do it later on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just on a baby level, you know. Like even with tap dancing, I don't think I have started because I want to do it professionally. But I just want to… Because I like watching it so much. Mm-hmm. I just want to know how it feels. It feels good. You know? yeah. Besides being, you know, really difficult. It feels good. It feels good. He likes to have sex. Get it? <laughs> 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 I'm on a roll today. Get him. Life's soldier. good when you have a sex. <laughs> Get him, cowboy. Uh, Favorite thing in life? Sex. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, Wu. What's was... it like to have a sex? I don't know. I've never had sex. <laughs> You've never had a sex? Never had sex. All right, sorry. We got to shut up. No, <laughs> let's stop. I was just going to get… On that question you just asked Wu, briefly, if you could go and, and do that, put yourself in a similar situation. Learn anything? Yeah. Dance. Dance. That's like the one thing I can't do. Mm-hmm. I can do everything. I, <laughs> okay. I, I literally can do everything. Okay, Jedi Master. No, it's… it's I, I, I can play all sports. I'm good at sports. Mm-hmm. I can edit. Tennis? I mean, cool sports. I can, <laughs> I can edit. Who fucking who cares Golf. about fucking baseball? I mean, like, baseball. Baseball. Okay. Um, I can edit. I, I'm good at computers. I can play games. I I can do a little bit of everything, but I cannot dance. Mm-hmm. And Me I've too. always wanted to. I see people dance, and I'm like, cringe. But at the same time, I'm low key jealous. Mm-hmm. So, I, I would learn how to dance, even even if it. Even to be able to move my body in a way that people are like, oh, that guy knows what he's doing. Even if it's not to a dancer's perspective, you know, skilled dancing, at least like, oh, that guy has some sort of rhythm. Plus, you know, women do find men that can dance very well sexy. Uh, I, I know. I went to a, I went on vacation with our boy Leonard. Mm-hmm. And… Yeah, Kwangju, and you you can dance there because it's the you know, He was like dancing, and then girls were just like, look, at, and he dances. You know, he dances the, the the kind of shit that would be like like the shit you see like on TikTok and stuff. But even then, 
like you know, like like this kind of shit. You know, the shit you you don't like. <laughs> that kind of shit. She's like, ooh, 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 whatever. But you know, even even then, you know, girls are like, oh, he's so cute. He's mm-hmm. cool. Look at him dance. And I'm like, he, that that sh- okay. It's like cringe. But, <laughs> I, I'm like, but at the same time, I'm like, fuck. But then I'm like cringe. But then I'm like, I can't even do that. I can't even do. Bleh, bleh, bleh. I can't even do that shit. <laughs> bleh, 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 bleh. I can't do this shit. I can't even do that. So if I had a year, I would learn to dance. You saw. Yeah, well, may, that that is like the one thing that I really hate to. I don't, maybe I would take like a public speaking class. I'm so. You get a year, dude. Man, I don't know. I'm scared as shit to talk in front of large groups of people. I can rap and I can like talk in between the songs, but I don't know. Dance or learn how to speak in front of people or maybe some carpentry. That'd be mm. cool. That's bad. Learn how to make like a house in the woods. Carpentry's cool. That could be cool. Yeah. Carpentry's cool. My brother's cool. doing that with like the COVID shit. He's learning. He like made his girlfriend a loom the other day. Do you know what a loom is, right? Yeah, he made his girlfriend a fucking like loom for like sewing. Yeah. Sewing. He made her one. Wow, wow. Yeah, and he asked us like for Mother's Day for us to like throw in money for him to buy lumber to like fix our patio in the back. I think that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Some nice wood. Yeah, wood. Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah. looks like you want to learn how to deliver mail. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have some uh, serious calf muscles yeah. for that, right? I think it, uh, I don't. I always wanted to learn how to sing properly. Like I don't know how to use my my voice. I almost of, said that. Too. That's like if you can't do it, you can't do it. That's no, sing, that's no, not true. That's not true. That's not true. It's a muscle, man. It is true. <laughs> no, if you, there are vocal, there are vocal trainers that can teach you how to like, like actually teach you how to use your voice. And I think, you know, if you get the vocal coaching, it's something you can do. You're right. Um, either that or I think I'd appreciate having a year to learn how to invest in stock market. And, and yeah. That would like be I think, smart. Dude, do you ever think about that, Sam? Yeah. Like, like it's so late to the party with with Bitcoin and stocks. Like, if I had just even, even taken a little bit of time Four years ago. And that's and that's kind of where that comes from. It's just like, wow, if you know, twelve months go back in time and it's like, yeah. Can somebody make up a new thing so I can invest like not crypto or stocks, just a new NFT? Well, NFT just new. blew up recently. There's always something there's something new around the corner. Compound compound interest is the most powerful force in nature. What'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> really, you guys, if you have a lot of money, you should just Put it like just let it sit in an account that gets good interest. And have you seen the like interest index rate? Funds, have you seen the interest mutual rates funds, of banks? Shit that you don't pay attention. It's too risky to go in the stock market. You have enough money that you could do some risk, but you could just invest in index funds and then take it out when you're 65. That'll be worth millions. Oh man, I'm harder working than I was 10 years ago, and that you know goes to show to some extent. I manage people, which I couldn't do 10 years ago. You know, I take care of people. You could barely manage yourself 10 years ago. Yeah, I could. Yeah, exactly. 10 years ago, I could barely take care of myself. I didn't have any. But now I'm, you know, I'm cleaner and everything. Um, More than anything, though, there's one thing that changed about me. Like 10 years ago, I used to, you know, I, you know, you guys don't have a temper. I used to burn bridges easily and like say what I thought and people didn't like it. And then I changed that, but then I regretted changing it. So now I just burn bridges again. <laughs> and I think that's a good idea because… Give the man some matches. Because what happens is… Listen, what happens is every person I thought was a piece of shit or every person I thought was a morally bad person… Because I have moral standards. You Both of you know that. I have mm-hmm. a, a lot of moral standards. Every time I think that guy's a piece of shit, it ends up getting out that they are a piece of shit. And I, I realized I have a good judge of, judgment of character. And every time I've burned a bridge, that person's ended up doing something bad. Every single, I'm not, I can't name names, but almost every person that I've been like, that guy's a piece of shit. He ends up being a piece of shit. And even though I'm the one of the few people that goes out and tells people, like, what if I don't like when something's happened? I say, like, I don't like that. You're a shitty person. And then they're like, and then 
they end up being a shitty person. So I used to not do… I stopped doing that. I used to say like, don't just keep that shit to yourself. But then if nobody says anything ever, then they get away with it. So fuck them. (laughs) <laughs> Fuck them. I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad I tell people this shit now. I don't care anymore. But yeah, that changed. So I guess I changed and then I unchanged. Yeah. But other than that, I'm cleaner. I guess. What about you, Sam? Ten years ago. Ten, I know. Ten, ten, years, ten ago. years ago. Ten years ago. Um, where are we? Ten years ago. Yeah. Ten years ago, I was probably um. You started you getting big. Bar, no. Right? No, he started… No, that was before. I was probably not in the most… I'd like to think I was not the most responsible of people. Um, financially. Um, and just across the board, I think I was just living life um, the way I thought… Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see a long-term future for myself in terms of my career and in terms of my relationship and personally I just didn't see where my life was going and it was like everything was about tomorrow and today that's all I was looking for and it was like going out and drinking and partying and hanging out with friends and that's all I was thinking about so work was always there and I was I was working but um, 2011, I probably wasn't enjoying work as much and I probably wasn't working as hard. Um, yeah, I think having in that 10-year period, I, I've i got married, I've had kids, um, things have changed completely. So it's kind of, that's allowed me to kind of refocus everything and change my priorities completely. And I think for me, it's just move the goalposts. Changing your priorities allows you to kind of, you know, otherwise, I I think I said it to my wife the other day, if we didn't have kids, I don't even know if I'd be alive today. Like, I, I don't know. I just felt like I was pissing my life up against the wall. I wasn't really doing anything. I was going out and working, I was making money, I was earning a living, but what was I really living for? I didn't feel like I was living for anything of any great importance. Were you with your wife then? How long have you been with her? I was in a relationship. Our relationship wasn't great and it was on and off. Um, But I just didn't like, you know, I didn't, I didn't have… I, I didn't even have the thought of buying property. I didn't even have like, I didn't have long term goals in in place. There was nothing there, so I was just like, yeah, whatever, you know. I'll just go out and get drunk with my friends, and we'll see what happens. And that's all life was. I don't think I had. Yeah, I don't think I had okay. money in the bank. You were you were in your you were in the prime of your your twilight of your twenties. That's. Ten years ago, I was in my thirties. Well, yeah, but early thirties. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. I guess, but but um, even so, even so, I think you know, it's just kind of like, yeah. For me, I, I I probably regret not having focused on prioritizing things a little yeah, earlier in life. Okay, that's still. I mean, you 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 took the you took the right. Your timeline was pretty appropriate, to be honest. To be fair. So I don't think you should, yeah. I no, I, and uh, I don't beat myself oh, yeah, up yeah, about it. Right, but, yeah. but going back to, back then, yeah. Looking back ten, you know, we're yeah, talking about like, ten years ago. So yeah. huge difference in my life. It's yeah. been a complete turnaround. Even for like three years ago, for me though, I was me Wu too. Like we were like even up until like two years ago, Wu and I we were drinking a lot, right? Even until we were drinking a lot, you know. Not not much anymore. I don't. I don't drink, I don't drink, I don't drink much. No. Same. What made you stop? Well, because I'm not working in a not nightlife anymore. Because I was involved in club business before, uh, so I was like I was out most of the time. I mean, almost every day at night, you know. But I'm not doing the club business anymore. So you miss it? Not really. Yeah, I miss you, but I don't miss the drink <laughs> Does that it, much. Are you an? Are you generally an early? An early morning person? Now I am. 
Okay. But I wasn't before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I used to always sleep around six, seven. Mm -hmm. But these days I wake up around like nine thirty, ten. Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't know. I don't know the the amount of like affection that I that people like are able to show, or the amount of like honesty that people are able to show when they drink, is something that I just like. I really want in my life. Like, I, there's lots of reasons why I'd like to stop drinking, like the calories, whatever. But sometimes, like, the only way that you can, like, open up with somebody is if you share a couple of drinks. That's, like, the thing that I love the most about, like, Korean dinner is, like, everybody's eating the same thing and everybody's a little bit loose, you know, and is able to, like, talk in a way that you can't really do and or a lot of people can't do when they're sober. Maybe you could, can. If everyone could, like, get on that kind of level of honesty and open up the way they do when they drink, I guess I wouldn't really feel the need to. But I think it'd be, it's kind of scary to think about not drinking. Is is that a cultural thing, though? I don't know. I don't know. Like, well, okay. It could be a family okay. thing, too. Everyone but, in my so, family. Uh, think back to your friends and family back in the States. Can you relate to them, like, without drinking? To that, on that level? Because we've drank together so much. <laughs> I don't know. I may, Yeah, I think. I'm not saying me necessarily. Like, I have no problem, like, having a heart-to-heart -heart sober or not mm. sober. But I'm, I'm mostly saying, like, the people around me. I mean, it's, there are a lot of people who you ne you can't really— you never get to know the deep parts of them if they're I think you, you get that because your hangovers aren't that bad. Yeah. Yeah, if your hangovers are bad, you just it doesn't matter what's not worth it. What beautiful conversation you have. The next day, if you feel like dying, it's not worth it. I can't. I can't enjoy a drink because… You're worried about what's coming? I decided I don't have to… Even if I don't worry about it the next day, I literally I literally don't see the point of getting up and continuing because it's so miserable. Yeah. It's so bad. And, um, Some people get them really bad, right? You no. Know, I get them bad. I hate everything. And I get a hangover. Well, what do you think is different about you? 10 years ago, well, than it is now in terms of, I guess, mentally or psychologically? I think the biggest difference was I couldn't learn anything 10 years ago. It was hard for me to… Absorb. Uh, yeah. I think everything is just pretty much in order these days. Yeah. And uh, emotionally too. I think I have more more patience. Yeah. Because I was, if somebody tests me, I was quick to just <laughs> fire on them too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, because I hate people testing me in any way, you know? That yeah. was That's probably a reaction from being in prison, right? You kind of have to like yeah, that, protect yourself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it happened before when I was locked up, you know? Because the environment that I was living in. Yeah, I just, I just don't like people testing me in, in any way, you know? <laughs> yeah. But… These days, I, I don't care. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not that important anymore. I've seen people yeah. test one. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the same. <laughs> okay. Like that's that's his reaction. And you're probably confident enough now to know that if people are testing you, it's because they're not confident. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, I you have like hundreds of women just, being like, I, I want to have even, your baby. I don't even think that far. You know? Yeah. I, I don't even think that far. I just… <laughs> you know, Just laugh I off. just have to… Go do what I have to do. You know? That's pretty badass that <laughs> uh, you don't think that far. <laughs> that means you literally don't give a fuck about the person that's testing you. Yeah. Do you think you're happier and now? I'll forget about it within probably like not even a minute. Are you happier you know? now? Yeah, that's a good question. Are you happier now or than you were I'm 10 years ago? I'm way happier now. Yeah. Uh, way. Way much happier right now. Uh, Happy woo. <laughs> how did you do it? How'd, how'd, you, how'd you change? How did I change? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a good it was question, a man. long, long progress, you know. Yeah. Like, did you just get tired of the shit. Um, I, I think there's, I don't know how it works with the brain, but probably there's a part in our brain where it develops like a muscle, you know. Like, for example, we like certain, we like to play with certain things or listen to certain things when we we're young, and eventually that changed. Yeah. And probably we're probably gonna be listening to different music five years later. And 10 years later, 20 years later, we're probably going to just completely listen to different stuff, you know. I think because that part of the brain develops. And I guess that patient part of my brain developed and, yeah. And testosterone levels going down <laughs> too, right? 
Because when you're like tw- in your that 20s helps. and 30s, and like yeah. late 20s, like, yeah, testosterone can make you make a lot of stupid decisions, right? Yeah, probably. That's chemical too. Chemically too, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like the th- way I've changed is Aggressiveness that levels definitely go down. I've, I've lived… Mm-hmm. I've realized the importance of like being aware of how I'm feeling emotionally now. And because I've like lived with my own brain for long enough, I I know the depths that, that like I can go like this side of me. If I like if I let a certain thought take me this way, I'm gonna be really fucking pissed off. If I let like this thought continue to like unravel and eat itself, like that'll make me super anxious. This is gonna make me sad. This is gonna make me depressed. And like the moment that I have like a negative thought now, I just walk away from everything and just like go for a, a walk and be like. Why are you? Why are you so sad today? Why are you depressed? What is causing this? And be like, oh, it's because it's like something Dave said on the phone to me a week ago, and I didn't fucking or, or like, oh, it's something that somebody said that criticized me for this. And instead of like thinking about why it made me upset, I just sort of like tried to walk it off. I I can like block my brain from allowing it to go to these like extremes of emotion and try to sort of just be at peace. That's a good ability. I, I think if you can do that, you're kind of in a in a a lucky place because there are a lot of people out there that can't do that. I think there are a lot of people out there that still have their Achilles heel tends to be they tend to lean on things like alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um like I, I I think for me, having children, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to try and maintain that level of sanity because you you can't let the walls crumble down because they're watching you. You could damage them, yeah. You you have to like you have to keep your shit in check because you know if you have a bad day, that is gonna have some kind of effect on them. If 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 I'm going through a bad if I'm in a bad space, you know, I don't want to take it out on them. I don't want them to deal with the the shit I'm dealing with. Like, I mean, for me right now, it's just, it's it's probably one of the worst times in my life because like not being able to get on an airplane and just like, being in a, a in a profession where you live under a microscope every day of the year, every day of the year, my release is to remove myself from Korea just to get away from being beneath that microscope. And whether that's taking a trip home or, or getting out of the country for a few days, not being able to have that um, option option right now is just for me making me so anxious. Really? I can't go home. I can't go and see my friends and family. It's if I go to Australia, it's two weeks quarantine. I come back, it's another two weeks quarantine. Like, and you you hear about friends and family that are going through you know issues with their health, and it's like it's just like it does your head in. So it's like. You know, you go for a walk, great. But then you start thinking and you're like, oh, shit. And the kids are at home and you're like, oh. oh. So it's like you pour yourself a, a, a drink on the sly. You, you want to come crash at my place for a few days? Well, you know, as much as the option is there, you've still got the kids at home. And it's like, you know, I, I can't just walk away from of course, yeah. from that. Um. Yeah, I think we're living in a in a situation right now where everyone's definitely on the edge, and mental health is I don't know. I, I think it affects people differently, but it, it's yeah, it's really a, a a situation that's really hard to kind of you can't just put your finger on and say this is this is the answer. Everyone has you know they're different you know, different mm-hmm. issues with it. Yeah, and everyone has like a different thing to offer to the situation, I think. Like Dave, you but you dealt with like depression and shit yeah, well before this time when a lot of people are, right? 
Yeah, so you're but, like a good person to talk to whenever you, somebody yeah. feels that. Yeah, but I don't know. Just actually, what I'm gonna say is really negative, so I shouldn't say it. Yeah. Just, uh, just a lot of people just like a, a little, a little life problem or something. Just I'm feeling sad. Mental health. People uh, yeah. are jumping on this ship a little too easily now. And you know me, I've been <laughs> for years and years and years, and I just don't even. I don't. I don't look at it as something strange at all. I think everybody has to deal with mental health. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a thing. You have physical health. You have mental health. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's not. It's not something that you should. A lot of people use it as an excuse to blame things on, and I. And it's it's annoying. Like, you don't like it. Well, there was a time where you don't like. Well, then fucking deal with it. And I don't think much has changed except that we're a little bit more open to, you know, accepting that that's a thing now. There's there's mm. that thing called mental health. It's a thing. Let's accept it. But I don't think you should use it as a crutch. Mm. And I don't use it as a crutch. And I, my depression gets real bad. Like real, you guys know it gets real mm. bad. And I go into dark places, but I don't use it. I don't use it as a, as an excuse. <laughs> I, yeah. No, it's true. I mean, the anxiety has like an evolutionary purpose. Yeah. Sometimes it's telling you you're not going the right way. Exactly. Sh- I just switch it up. I don't drink coffee anymore just because yeah. I was having freaking panic attacks earlier. Now I don't have panic attacks. Yeah. Anymore ever. Wow, that's great. I just stopped drinking coffee. But see, that's exactly what I was saying though. Like when I when I, w- I went through like a super dark place a couple of years ago, you were I didn't know I wasn't used to it because I'm always a super happy dude. And you were like, hey man, embrace the sadness. Yeah. It's part of it's part of life. You remember that conversation? Right, right? I think about that all the time. I can't tell you how many people I think I've like sort of helped out of dark places. Like I always wanted 10 years ago, I always wanted to be the friend that people could talk to. You were like the guy who like, don't be sad yeah. before. He was but like, I can't like, do that. Don't be sad. Why are you sad? You got everything. Like, dude, yeah. shut the I was like, shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how much things you have. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But at the on the other spectrum, I'm also like, yeah, but shut up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I get to go through the same shit. Stop using it as… Don't don't blame everything on it. Uh, Boo, do you, you have any struggles with mental health? What? Do you have any struggles with mental health? Struggles with mental health? Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't get Just it. Just sounded like… You ever get no. sad? Do, do I get sad? Of course I get sad. Real sad? <laughs> yeah, I get real sad sometimes. Yeah. I, it doesn't any, any, everybody get yeah. real sad? <laughs> Have you ever wanted to not be alive? Uh, since when I was elementary. <laughs> since you were a kid? Yeah, I felt I felt that since when I was like uh, first grade, second grade. Whoa. Yeah. What do you remember thinking? Uh, would you ask me? You know? What was the, the first? Yeah, you're just like, oh, it'd be better if I wasn't here. Yeah. It's in first grade. Yeah. Because cause my, my mom, she left to the States so she could provide me for a better life. Yeah. And I had to stay with my, my dad, my stepmom, and my half-brother for about three years. You know? And a lot, a lot of things happened then. And then, you know, she came back to get me after three years. And I lived in Arizona for a little bit. And, and I was like the only Korean kid there. So I had to deal with a lot of racism. Yeah. And that's a reoccurring theme with all of these. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> that comes on our show that lived in America says yeah. that. Yeah. And that three years when my mom was in a state, you know, I had to go through a lot. With my other family, you know, a lot. What happened? Ah, uh, because you know, I, I went my dad, my stepmom, and my half brother, and I, I didn't really know them at all, you know, like my stepmom and my half brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they're supposed to be family. And so, yeah, I remember. Uh, I don't know if my mom would like this, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but. You, whatever you're comfortable talking about, yeah. you talk about. If you don't, if you're not comfortable, yeah. you don't have to talk about it. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, I went through some things that kids shouldn't go through mm-hmm. at that age. Yeah. It was just difficult living with people that I didn't know at all. You know? Yeah. And of course, 
my stepmom and my half brother and their family, they're not gonna, they didn't really like me, especially the Korean culture back then, you know. Uh, they didn't like you. Why? They were like ashamed of? Oh, uh, I don't know what they're feeling, you know. I think but could- I once, their, uh, his, his grandma, she was just like yelling at me, like, you know, go back to your, your own family, you know. Oh my I God. I remember that, you know. And you already like miss your mom. So you already yeah. feel like. Yeah. That must have been really hard. Could, yeah. Korean culture, especially back then, was, I think, you know, the the half brother, half sibling kind of situation with the families coming together was always a difficult um, environment. I mean, even now it's not great, but back then it was, yeah, really difficult for the children, especially. Uh, so I went through, I, I guess I first experienced depression then, you know. Wow. Uh, but I think it was more than depression. I just went a little crazy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I was a um, really peaceful kid, you know. And I think I became a little violent after that. Because I was fighting every day in school. I think I was just taking my anger out of, you know, whatever I can, you know. Uh. Wow. That's a deep thought for, like, such a young kid to have. And, then, and then going to the States just kind of exasperated. That. I mean, at first I was uh, probably, like, the happiest kid on mm-hmm. earth, like, in, on the plane. With my mom, I was just, just too happy, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're going I wasn't on a expecting trip what mom? was going to happen when I get there and go to school, you know? Yeah. So before I went to school, everything was uh, just like heaven, you know, because I was just happy being with my mom, you know? Mm. And I go to school, you know, I can't speak any any English, you know? And yeah, and then just hell started. Because you have these grown-ups like yelling at you, go away, go back to Korea? Uh, I don't know what they were no, saying. Just kids. <laughs> Just kids. Like, but he said the grandma. No, the I know, kids, but grandma. No, that's, that's in Korea. That's in Korea. <laughs> ah. You got to keep up with the conversation. I was listening. I thought he said the kid's grandma said, go no. back to you. No, no, no. no, 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 no the, the step. The he, he was brother. happy until he went to school because he went, it was with his mom and he was really happy. But then when he got to school, he couldn't speak English, you know, and that's when the hell started breaking. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I I heard that. That part of the <laughs> no, conversation was in Korea. That, 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 that was that was in Korea. That was his half brother's grandma talking. Ah, sorry, so I'm confused. Was, yeah. I thought that he was like, yeah. First part of the this story. is why you shouldn't drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking up my brain. Yeah. Tell me about it. This happens like every episode. <laughs> <laughs> you came here drunk, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> when did you feel like you started to have control over your life? When I got locked up. <laughs> yeah. Because cause I met some good teacher when I was there, you know. So in a way, it's half force. Like you have to control yourself there, you know. Or you get pepper sprayed and get and, and go to the <laughs> hole, you know. And, <laughs> control yourself. And you're going to get pepper yeah. sprayed. Yeah. And your freedom is taken out, you know. And yeah, yeah you got to control yourself there if you want to get out safely. Was, it, was that the first kind of um, like authority figure that you respected? That you really had besides your mother, authority figure. Yeah, like, like you kind of mentioned that you didn't really have much of a relationship with your father, and obviously in school you didn't really have much of a relationship in terms of teachers. Mm-hmm. But you said you met someone in prison that. Oh uh, yeah. Was that kind of the first kind of authority figure? No, no, no. With the exception of your mother, my, you, my boxing coach. Uh huh. Yeah, before I got locked up, I had. He was like my kind of like my dad, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, he taught me he taught me discipline with with training and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then, but then I I was still doing bad stuff, you know. Besides boxing, so and he was a busy man too. So, uh, but I think the jails, I mean, the teachers that I met in jail, they helped me a lot. You know, and I was were you more taking mature classes then. in jail? You like they had classes that you could take. No, there are a lot of good people that comes in, you know, they just talk to you one-on-one. You mm-hmm. know, they take their time. And I think the first teacher that I, I think it was uh, this Korean lady. She was quite old, nun. 
Yeah. And she used to come and see me every week just to talk to me for for an hour. Yeah. And it, and she used, and it was so like calming, mm-hmm. you know. And she helped me a lot. A lot of other teachers. Yeah. They taught me about life. So you like liked having that kind of structure. Mm-hmm. Even uh you know Danny Trejo? Do you know Danny yeah, Trejo? Yeah. The, the actor, actor. Yeah. The one who has a huge tattoo. He used to come to our place uh like uh very often. And he used to tell us about his story and he used to bring food and I don't know, I think I did not talk about this last time. No. I can't remember. But yeah, because he was he was locked up where we were locked where I was locked up as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, and he used to just you know, come and just, you know, tell us stories and, you know, just give us motivation. And I think uh, it was, he gave us some type of option. Like, you know, I don't, I don't exactly remember what it was. I think it was something like, if you guys don't have any fight for a month, I'll give you guys a lowrider show on, on the yard, you know. Wow. And he, yeah, he brought like, like 10 cars, lowriders, like choppers. And he just... You know, you know, he gave us like a barbecue party with the music and we're like dancing, eating food, low rider so awesome. everywhere, like purple, green, just everything, you know? <laughs> uh, wow. That's cool. So were, were there, was there ever a time where there was like about to be a massive fight breaking out and someone's like, no, we're going to get, we got to have this low rider show. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember you exactly. Don't, motherfucker, don't do it. <laughs> huh. I can't remember exactly, but we we're pretty calm for until that happened. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna fuck you up after the show, <laughs> rider show. <laughs> we wait till Danny's show is over. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Damn. That's. I mean, it's kind of like first grade, second grade. Having thoughts like that is. I mean, being a parent myself having kids and, 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 you know, that's kind of scary. I mean, I, I've never had those thoughts myself. I mean, the closest I've had is like, I wonder how many people would turn up to my funeral. Like, but yeah, I guess it, it makes me think about being a father and I need to, you know, make sure that I've got my shit together. Yeah. And, you know, make sure that it, it, kids, I mean, even from a young age, if you, you know, you dealing with issues like this as a parent, I've got to have my shit together for my kids and make sure that they've, they've got a space where they can be, you know, somewhere that they can be mentally, you know, have their mental health in check and make sure that they're stable. That's what I was going to say is, is when I was that like, oh, everything's okay. Don't be sad. You got it all kind of friend. I don't think I was like a good friend. Like I always wanted to be the person you could talk to when you were sad. But it wasn't until I actually like got really sad myself that I felt like I could actually be be of any value to somebody who was going through something. Like the, the last song on my new album that I just finished was like about this, this night. I was just kind of like, it was like two years ago. It was right before my, my family came to visit Korea for the first time. And I would just been like, really just felt like I'd lost control of my happiness. Like I was always able to be happy and it, I was just losing it. I was like not enjoying being around people. I always felt like super nervous. And I remember like there was this one night where the only thing that was like calming was thinking about like not being alive. And it was like the only time in my whole life where I felt like I like kind of wanted to die. And I woke up, I like, that was the last thought I had is like, oh man, it would be so peaceful to just get out of my fucking body. And I woke up the next morning and checked my phone and it was a message from my brother that was like, Uncle Jeff killed himself last night. (sighs) And my uncle, and this was like two weeks before my dad and my brother were coming. And my dad's baby brother hung himself. I got cousins, he had babies. And he killed himself and it was like this, it was almost like he killed himself while I was think having these like thoughts of like suicide for the first time in my life. And I don't believe in like supernatural shit like, like that, but it felt crazy. Like I was in tune with him as he was committing suicide. 
And then like super selfishly, I was like, man, that's going to fuck up my whole like trip with my dad. Like I've been wanting to show my dad this like life that I have here in Korea. And now he's going to be super sad the whole time. You know, I've like, there was like the one thing I was looking forward to is having my dad and my brother come visit me in Korea. And I felt like that had been like taken away from me. But it actually ended up being, I don't know, like ever, that was like the turning point in my life. It was like that whole sadness that I was feeling. I felt like it's past me now, you know, I can... I needed to feel what it was like to be sad so that I can appreciate the, the happiness that I have. I don't know. But yeah. My, and I played my dad the song that I wrote about that. And he's like, the reason I thought about this is because you said you were thinking, uh, since you, he said it was as a kid, he felt that sad. That makes you want to make sure you're on top of your shit as a dad. I played this song that I wrote about that to my dad and he called me crying and was like, you were that sad that you wanted to kill yourself? You wanted to kill yourself? I can't believe that. I can't believe you actually were ever that sad. That makes me feel like I was a bad dad. And it's kind of like, you got to let your kid feel, feel it, you know, go through it. Everyone's got to go through it. You can't just like fake it. You can't just fake the funk the, the whole your whole life and act oh, like yeah, everything's but okay. I, I think from a parent's perspective, like that's… You, it's tough. That's not something you want to hear. Like, <laughs> just thinking about your kid being that sad. If that's like, as a parent. You don't want to see, you don't want to deal with your child's, you don't want to have to deal with your child's death as a parent. And you don't want to have to think of your child having to go through that pain. You don't want to think of your child going through any kind of pain as a father or as a parent. And if your child is going through those emotions, and there's nothing wrong with those emotions, but from a parent's perspective, the first thing that comes to mind is, I'm doing a bad job. That's the first thing you think. And parents are all the same. It's like, what could I have done better? What could I have done differently? And, you know, you hear about Wu's story and you hear about first grade, and like I think about William, who's, you know, he turns five this year. You know, he's in first grade in two years. And to think about that, like that would that would break my heart. I'd be devastated. And we hear about kids that are dealing with those issues and Maybe they don't have parents that they feel comfortable going to and talking about these issues. But, you know, there are some young kids who have decided to, to take their lives. If I woke up one day and had to deal with that, even, you know, having to lose a child, whether it was through an accident and and. You know, it's in the news all the time. I I think I said to my wife the other night, I, I'd lose my shit. I would lose my shit. Even having another child, I don't know how I'd cope with that. I heard a story about um, a gentleman who here who has a few children and he's here working for a company. He came here for work and after being here after only a few months, his wife passed away from cancer. Um, and obviously with COVID and everything, he's decided to stay here and didn't go back to his home country. Even with that, I'd lose my shit. I'd, be, I'd probably be drinking a bottle of whiskey every night. Like, I don't know how I'd cope with that. 
that's the time I only think it gets out of control is when you don't accept it. And like that's why I was so appreciative of that advice from Dave. I think is that there are certain things in life that are inevitable. Like I, my father passed away when I was ah shit. I say twenty four, twenty five, and that was that was devastating. But that's an inevitability. Your parents are always going to pass away. You're going to lose your parents. That's going to happen. Um, it's difficult, and you'll never, you'll never, for, you know, it's it'll never go away. That sadness, it comes and goes. You'll have good days. You'll have bad days. Some days you'll wake up. You just, you'll just sit there and you'll be like, damn. And you'll just think about the good times. And that'll be your day. Your whole day will just go like that. And as much as you want to you wanna push it down and say, get the fuck back in there, it's... Why? That's part of who you are. That's a memory. That's your life. Sadness is... It's an emotion. We, we, we have... Happiness is an emotion. Everyone, everyone touts happiness. Happiness is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, sure. It is great. But we have to be able to get through the sadness to enjoy the happiness. And not dealing with the sadness and, 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 and saying, you know, I'm, fuck, I'm never going to be sad. It's never going to happen. You can't dodge it. But it, certain things in life are going to be inevitable. I think that you can't, you can't really like fully appreciate life until you come to terms with death. Like you have to, like I, I don't, I've always said like, I love my parents. My parents are the best, but it wasn't until, and I woke up, this was like last year. I woke up just having this crazy dream and I was just covered in tears. Like I was like crying in my sleep. And it was this, it was this dream I'm really happy that I remembered the dream because if I just like woke up covered in tears, I would have felt really weird about not knowing what it was. But it was this dream where I was in line with like a bunch of my friends going up this mountain. And at the top of the mountain was a restaurant. And everyone was like kind of like laughing and joking in line. And I remember kind of being like the life of the party and everyone was really, I don't know, it was just a really joyous occasion. And we're super excited to try this like trendy new restaurant. And the manager opens the door and he's like, Ryan, Saul, I don't remember which name they used. And I was like, yes, guys, it's our time. It's our time. And the person, the like host looked me in the face and goes, what the fuck are you so afraid of? And I was like, what is this guy's problem? Like, I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know this guy. Why is he yelling at me? And everyone is like quiet. And there's like a hundred people behind me in this line. And just looks at me and said, fucking get it out. Spit it out. What are you so afraid of? And I just started like crying crazy. And I was like, what are you doing? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. And he goes, what the fuck are you so scared of? And I just like screamed at him. Like, I'm scared that my mom and dad are going to fucking die soon. Okay. Like, leave me alone. What is wrong with you? Say it. Say it. And I was just like, I'm scared that my mom and dad are going to die. I'm terrified of it. And that's when I woke up. And it was like, man, if I've, I have felt so free since that day. It was crazy. And I just appreciate every moment that I'm talking to my parents and ever since then. But it was really nice to get that out, like have that release of like mm. how terrified I am about that. I've kind of like comes to terms with it. I don't know. Well, with all the things, with all your life experiences, mm. everything from your childhood to prison, coming in Korea, getting a dance. No, it's actually not prison. It's juvenile hall. <laughs> <laughs> from juvenile hall. Yeah, right. Why? 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 <laughs> to, why? To coming out, getting deported, coming to Korea. And with all the stuff you know, is there, you know, do you feel like you can help people with all your knowledge? Do you ever feel like you can transfer your knowledge to people? Oh, when, when they asked me about it, yeah. like recently, this young rapper, he sings and he produces music and he, and he was just a, asking me about the things that I went through and I gave him my experience and, you know, he said he feel relieved because he said he had a lot of pressure. I think 
a lot of young artists, they have a lot of pressure to be yeah. successful early. And I told him, you know, you're going to turn 30, you're going to turn 50, you're going to turn 50. And you might realize what you really want to do when you're 50 or 60. So, you know, always think about that because I, there were nobody who told me about that because I was, uh, I felt a lot of pressure too when I was dancing. I was doing a lot of stuff that I didn't want to do. And I, sometimes I made performance uh, from how they wanted me to do. And it was just a lot of pressure too when I was dancing. And yeah, yeah when I get a chance, if I could help, you know, from my experience, you know, it's good. It feels good. Yeah. I look at someone like Wu and I think you'd be really good at something like social work, like helping kids mm -hmm. in difficult situations. You've got so much life experience. You've, you've done so many different things. I just think like young kids would look up to someone like you and be able to get so much off their chest. Like I could talk to kids till I'm blue in the face and they're going to be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever, Sam Hammington. Do you want to do that, Will? Help kids? Yeah. Uh, if I if I have a chance, um, I think it always feels good when you help someone. When you help when you when you're helping someone, it's like, in a way, helping yourself. That's mm -hmm. how it feels, and you're kind of reminding yourself when you say certain words. Because I think we we will always need help until we die. Yeah. You know, I think, because like the kid, when they were born, they can't do anything without someone's help. You know, I think that's how it is with humans. We, you know, without help, you can't really do much, you know. Yeah, that is, it's crazy. We go out the same way we come in. Uh, Needing that love. In a box. Uh. So it's like <laughs> when I help somebody, it's like, uh, it feels like I'm helping myself at the same time, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's like a reminder because I think a lot of times we forget about a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. People, some people think that that makes life seem like less romantic, you know, that, that everyone is sort of self-interested. But I, I, I kind of think that it kind of just goes to show that we're all like one big kind of family and you get to choose the people that you help. You get to choose the people that, you make you feel better for helping, you know? So, yeah, I think that's a great way to think about it. I like, I've never heard someone say the reminder thing. Mm. That's a cool way to think about it. You're reminding yourself what you might need to hear as well. I hope this, these conversations help somebody out there in the podcast. Yeah. Listeners, since this is our last one. Yeah. We all need, we all need reminding at times, that's for sure. I love watching watching dudes cry too, so I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Whoever cries. Is that a kink? <laughs> <laughs> love watching that yeah. sounds like something that somebody might text like <laughs> comment under a picture of Woo. <laughs> I want you to make me cry. <laughs> make me cry. From I think I've literally commented that on Woo's. Behind. I think I've commented that on Woo's <laughs> Instagram before. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on again, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. He always brings out such great conversation. Yeah, you are like um, a magnet for amazing conversation. Am I? <laughs> you are. Yeah. You are. You are. I think, how many times have we had you on the podcast? It's just three now. Three? Four? Three. Three? So, so that means there'll be five episodes total, right? Because we broke them into. Yeah. So it's like, it just feels like every time we've had such deep, conversations and um sure, I think we went too deep this time <laughs> yeah we went really deep right well I tell you what I tell you what I don't think you've ever let our listeners down at all and I think there are going to be listeners out there this time I mean this episode is probably not going to be for all the listeners but there are definitely going to be listeners out there that are going to take something away from this episode and Wu has been an integral part of that and People are going to be able to say, "Hey, you know, I'm. I feel better for listening to this episode." So, thank you, thank you so much for joining us again. You're welcome.
<laughs> especially on a special episode like today. You know, it means the world having you here. Episode one to episode 52. Did you guys enjoy the adventure of this podcast? It's been a roller coaster. It's been a roller coaster. We've had some ups, we've had some downs. There's been some crazy episodes for sure. Yeah. It, it's been it's been fun. It's been fun. I mean, I, I really look up to you too a lot. So it's been really great to be able to work alongside you this consistently doing something. I appreciate you guys a lot. Yeah. You're inspirational to me, as I'm sure you are to others. And yeah. a lot of the guests, like Wu as well, have been it's been really great to get to meet some really interesting, powerful, cool folks. So yeah. Dave, I want to say thank you to you mostly. Thank you for introducing me to Sam and everyone at Dive. It's been really, it really helped me out a lot. I really fucking enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, but so we appreciate Wu coming together f- with us for the final one. And yeah. It's always a pleasure to see you, brother. Yeah. I want to hang out with you without a microphone recording <laughs> everything. I bet you got some even crazier stories. Congratulations on your last episode. Thanks so much. <laughs> let's let's do again. this one last time. <laughs> Woo, now's the time if there's anything you'd like to plug. I don't know right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> don't leave me hanging there. Jeez. Okay. Right, bye, bye, guys. Hey, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. It's been real. Peace. Hope you enjoyed the clip. If you did, listen to the full episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And make sure to subscribe to this channel, Dive Studios, and put those notifications on. Hit that bell. Boop, boop, boop.